Hi there, and welcome to Community Meditation. My name is Jonna, and I'm a meditation teacher in Southern California. This is a weekly live streamed meditation open to everyone. It's free, and our hope is that this becomes the largest gathering of meditators in the world. I'm really happy that you could be here, and I hope that you can help us to spread the word for this great resource. Um, these meditations are okay for beginners as well as people who have lots of experience with meditation. And tonight I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to progress in your meditation practice. And I, I use the air quotes on that because we like to think of things um, in terms of like linear progress. And meditation doesn't really fit into that kind of a, a structure, but there are ways that we can deepen in the practice. And I've shared with you up until now a few techniques for meditation um, or methods of meditation. And they actually can be combined. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about tonight. And you'll find that combining these methods will bring you um, into a deeper place in your meditation. You'll be able to feel more and you'll be able to meditate for even longer so that you can move through various experiences in the meditation instead of becoming uncomfortable right in the beginning and giving up. So I think we're still waiting for a couple of people to join us. Um, Johnny is here with us again this week. He's working on a bone. So if you hear something going on in the background, that's what it is. He's chewing away. Um, years ago, I had my own meditation studio and would have people come in for private sessions. What I noticed was the first session would go great. And then the second session, when they came back maybe the following week or two weeks later, they had a list of excuses about why they couldn't meditate at home. So I stopped using a studio, and now when I do privates, I visit people either in their home or we go to a place where they're likely to meditate on their own. And that's because Sometimes we think that to meditate, we need this quiet, dark place. And if that were the case, if we were always looking for the quiet, dark place, we would never meditate. And meditation is more about awareness rather than escape. So I love to have Johnny around in the activity of my regular life so that when I'm practicing meditation, it's in my real environment. So when I'm off the cushion, my body responds in the ways that I'm training it to respond on the cushion. If we go to that quiet, dark place where the conditions are seemingly perfect, we might feel like we get into this really deep meditation, but then when we go out into the real world, we have the same triggers and the same responses to those triggers. That's why if we meditate with the triggers, then we develop new responses to the triggers. We find space between the um, stimulus and the response. So invite your dogs in, invite your kids in, have your normal life going on around you as you do community meditation. It's another reason why I love this live stream format because you're all doing it in a place where you'll meditate tomorrow and the next day and the next day. So let's begin. We'll start with taking just three deep breaths together, coming into the space and connecting with our intention for this evening. Rest your palms facing down on your knees. If you're sitting in a chair, have your feet resting on the floor. If you're sitting on the floor on a meditation cushion, make sure that there's plenty of room in your body for your breath. Slightly tilt your chin towards your chest. Feel the opening that this creates in the back of your throat for your breath. Close the eyes or rest the gaze downward. Feel the gentle rise and fall of your body with your breath. And together we'll take three deep and cleansing breaths, inhaling through the nose, 
Exhaling through the mouth. Inhale. Release. One more time. Inhale. Let it go. Good. Now with eyes closed or gaze downward, or you can lift the gaze. Let's connect with the energy of the other meditators. The idea that there are countless people joining us for this meditation right now. Maybe people who are logged into community meditation, maybe just folks who happen to be meditating right now. We're all kind of doing this together. So see if you can feel that energy, the connection of energy to the other meditators and to me. And let's connect with our motivation for being here, for meditating. So many people these days advertise meditation as being some kind of self-help tool, but there's so much more we can get out of meditation. We certainly find inner peace and this reduces stress, but ultimately, the benefit of meditation is a benefit for all beings, which of course includes yourself. But we sit to do the practices so that there's a change within us that creates a change within others. So for we sit for inner peace, then we can become a, um, an opportunity for others to experience inner peace. Connect with this idea that we're not just doing it for ourselves. This isn't just for stress reduction or relaxation. There's something so much bigger happening here. And it's very normal if you aren't exactly sure what that bigger thing is. We have the aspiration for this bigger thing long before we understand what it is. So you may think you're sitting here in community meditation for inner peace that creates outer peace, world peace, universal peace. Perhaps that your enlightenment is for the benefit of all beings. And allow this motivation to be your inspiration for these practices and also the attitude with which you listen to everything I say tonight. So let's talk about the meditations. So far I've introduced to you handshake practice as well as the benefactors meditation. And you can do one or the other, or you can combine the two. And what this would look like is engaging in the benefactors meditation, receiving the wish of love. And if you're brand new to this, don't worry, I'm going to explain how to do it when we're in the meditation. Receiving the wish of love from your benefactors. And then when it becomes uncomfortable, right? When you have that feeling of maybe unworthiness or a sense of longing or discomfort, 
or the feeling that you just don't want to do this anymore. At that point, engage handshake practice. Shaking hands with that feeling of discomfort, unworthiness, uh, boredom, and see what happens when you shake hands with it. You're staying in the meditation as you're doing this. You're just employing a different tool. And then when that feeling of discomfort seems to relax, then see if you can receive the wish of love even more fully from your benefactors. So let's talk about what benefactors are and what handshake practice is if this is your first time or if you would like a review. In order to understand benefactors, we have to explain love. And I'm not talking about a romantic kind of love. I'm talking about love as the power to commune with someone in the goodness of their very being while wishing them deeply well. So love is not something, something that we fall into or out of or that happens to us. Love is actually a power, the power to commune with someone and the goodness of their very being. So what does that part mean? It means when you're connected with someone and you're looking into like the depth of their being beyond any limiting judgments about that person. And it's even beyond any limiting judgments you might have about yourself and your capacity to view others. And we've pro you've probably experienced this with children and if you're a parent, you certainly, when you look at your child, you see their unlimited potential. And you see beyond their runny nose or their tears, and you see into that potential. So that's the power to commune with someone and the goodness of their very being. Connecting with that part of them, that limitless part of them. And then the next part is while wishing them deeply well. So as you're connecting with them and seeing them in this way, you're being with them in a very kind, loving, compassionate way, wishing them deeply well. Just like when you look into the eyes of a child who's crying, you see into their unlimited potential, and at the same time, you're holding this space of kindness and compassion. They're still crying, they're upset. As the adult, you know that whatever it is they're upset about isn't um, really all that big of a deal, right? So you just hold this space of kindness, sending like this, communicating through energy that everything is okay. Do you know what I mean? Have you experienced this? If you don't have children or you haven't interacted with children, maybe you've experienced this with a pet. And of course I feel this with Johnny. Um, he can't communicate with me like a person communicates with me. So there are times when we're struggling to understand each other, but it just feels like we're looking into something deeper than our, our shell. And we're both almost seeing into this, right? Trying to communicate something to the other one. And at the same time, there's this warmth. It's done with an attitude of kindness and warmth. So love is the power to commune with someone in the goodness of their very being while wishing them deeply well. So you've identified that you've felt this with maybe a child or with a pet, maybe others. And while you have experience this power to commune with someone in this really special way, many, many, many people have communicated with you in this way or have extended this wish of love to you. And that's what we're going to practice in the benefactors meditation. So anyone who has been with you in this simple loving way is a benefactor. And we identify two kinds of benefactors in some of the meditations spiritual benefactors and benefactors from our ordinary life. So spiritual benefactors are those who have inspired you from afar. Someone like the Dalai Lama, 
Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, Gandhi, and for me, Gary Zukav, the author, is one. Uh, my teacher's teachers are spiritual benefactors for me. So usually we haven't met spiritual benefactors, but sometimes we have met them, but they are highly realized spiritual beings. Someone like Dr. King, who viewed the world with a sincere sense of equanimity, all beings equal. He saw into everyone's potential beyond limiting judgments. Everyone, not just people he liked or people he knew well. He held this wish of equanimity for all beings. So someone like that is a spiritual benefactor. And you may think of um, teachers' teachers or um, religious figures, but also um, authors, musicians, people who have inspired you through their work, activists as well. These are all spiritual benefactors, living or dead. And then we have benefactors from our ordinary life. And these are people that we know well, or maybe are strangers who gave us a, um, an encouraging smile right when we needed it. Sometimes benefactors from our ordinary life are also our spiritual benefactors. For me, um, my brother falls into both categories when I'm doing these meditations. Um, oftentimes grandparents will fall into both categories for the meditations. Tonight we're just going to focus on the benefactors from our ordinary life. In fact, we're going to take just one moment in time with a benefactor. And we're going to practice receiving their wish, this simple wish for our deep well-being, happiness, and joy. Why do we do this? There are a lot of reasons, but the first and probably easiest to understand, to kind of hold on to, is that if you recall that moment when someone was with you in this simple loving way, seeing into your like unlimited potential, more than likely, you were distracted by something in that moment. And if you weren't, as you were receiving this wish of love from them, something happened and you became uncomfortable and you looked away, or you did something to break the energy of the moment. So what we're going to do is practice receiving this wish more fully than we did when it happened. And when it becomes uncomfortable, we engage handshake practice. So handshake practice is exactly what it sounds like. You know the attitude that you have when you shake hands with someone you've never met. It's an attitude of hospitality, of openness, of kindness, of curiosity. And we can approach our feelings in the same way. So the same attitude that you have when you shake it, you extend your hand to a stranger, you're gonna have that attitude when a feeling arises during the meditation. So you're meditating, you're receiving this wish of love from your benefactors, and then all of a sudden you feel yourself tighten up and you want to stop receiving or the mind wants to go someplace else. When that happens, engage handshake practice. Shake hands with the experience of discomfort or wanting to distract yourself. And then when that dissolves, when that releases, go back to receiving this wish of love, replaying the memory from the benefactor moment. Sound good? Let's get to it. Palms resting down on your knees. Chin is slightly tilted towards your chest. Feel the breath move through the body. Allow everything I just said to marinate somewhere inside of you. There's no need to focus on it or try to memorize it. Just trust that it's penetrating your knowing in some way, connecting with something you already know.
can bring to mind a benefactor moment. A time when someone was with you in a simple loving way. You felt that they saw into you, into your potential beyond any limiting judgments. A time when someone demonstrated patience for you. A time when someone trusted you. A time when someone believed in you. So when you've settled on one of these moments, begin to feel this benefactor present to you right now in this way, as if that moment were happening right now. Feeling the warmth, the presence of your benefactor. Feeling their kindness. Feeling what it's like to be with someone in this way. Feel the happiness of this moment. Begin to receive all of the good feelings open to these feelings. Receiving this happiness more and more. If you sense any resistance, engage handshake practice. Feel the wish of love from your benefactor as if it were a gentle shower of healing energy softly pouring over you. Seeping into your skin into your flesh. (laughs) 
into your bones and blood, into every cell. Every part of you loved in its very being. Begin to receive this wish into every emotion, every feeling you're experiencing right now. Into every thought. Every part of you loved in its very being. Shaking hands with any part of you that resists this or becomes uncomfortable. until you just merge into oneness with this energy of kindness. Dropping any visualization and allowing the mind to fall totally open, unconfined, unrestricted. Now connecting with the idea that you've generated merit with your efforts and with the sound of the bell, together we will dedicate the merit that we've generated for the well-being of all. I thank you all for being here this evening, for joining me every Wednesday for community meditation. 
and for sharing information about this program. I hope to see you again next week for the live stream. The live stream is really special because it becomes our online sangha. Of course, there are the recordings that go up on the YouTube channel, but it's best to join live so that we can feel your energy. It's how the practices really come alive. And making the time for this practice puts out a, a good energy into the world. Many thanks, good work, and I will see you next week.